Before this video starts, I do want to address the allegations. Matt, you boy, 1653, I am sorry for the emotional harm you have received when I joke about my rights being taken away. As courtesy to you, I have left the similar jokes already written for this video in the script so you can enjoy more of them, and will continue to make them when it's funny. Also, you do what to Scooby-Doo? Let's keep it clean, sir. We get it. You're a furry. Wigs! Wigs? Hey, welcome to Scooby-Topia. Before on the channel, we've looked at some of the most requested Scooby-Doo villains that gave you nightmares. From my own personal nightmare of Gramps the Vamp, Old Ebenezer the Puppet Master, or Elias Kingston. Through all the comments of everyone revealing their own personal nightmares, there's only one ghastly apparition that seems to pop up more than any other we've seen so far. This time, we're looking at the frightening ghost of Dr. Coffin, and the top-tier episode he derives from. The Harem Scarum Sanitarium is the seventh episode of the Scooby-Doo show, and you might notice this makes three, soon to be four with the next video, villains on this list from this particular franchise entry. In fact, most villains I've seen be requested to join this line tend to come from this series, proving once again that it might just have the truly scariest monsters of classic Scooby. The setting of the episode certainly adds to the atmosphere, featuring the titular sanitarium, a medical facility used often in the 20th century for illnesses like tuberculosis, or even the more polite way to say a psychiatric hospital during the period, which often saw much death and abuse, and in modern times, supposed hauntings. It only makes sense to set a ghost story here, and though he didn't feature, this particular haunt was so iconic that he was one of the spooks designed for the museum in 2004 Scooby-Doo Monsters Unleashed. Let's take a look at what made this guy just so bad. The episode gets us right in on the action with this guy, having him stand right over Niagara Falls, somehow, looking for his next victim as he spots the gang trying to find the US border in the rain. I don't know why the episode makes it look like they're in the middle of nowhere visually, but a border patrol officer stops them, mistaking them for lawbreakers trying to sneak across, and he makes sure to tell them to take the left fork toward Foster Road, not the right where weird things have been happening, like the mad ghost of Dr. Coffin returning. Unfortunately, lightning just happens to strike the sign, though you'd think Fred could still tell he turned right and not left, and as they realize they're lost, the gang follow an ambulance all the way to Shady Sanitarium. While the ambulance seems to be bringing in a patient, this is definitely a place I would not want to take shelter in. It seems like one of those places places you check in but never check out of, but only Scooby notices the frightening old spook looking down. Some terrible organ music strikes some guard dogs into action, only leaving once it quits again. The mysterious Dr. Tewksbury lets the gang in, explaining the dogs belong to the late Dr. Coffin, for whom he was an assistant, and that they were trained to obey using the organ just like they saw. He confirms that was indeed the ghost playing, and offering dinner is the only way to keep the boys around. They ask where the patients are, which the doctor is also confused by, saying they keep being scared off by the ghost or disappear, as the doctor has returned from the grave to continue his experiments. They accept the offer to stay anyway, which is immediately a mistake as all three boys see the ghost, and Scooby's fearful lunge reveals a secret passage. After goofing with the mirrors surrounding it, Shaggy tries turning on the lights but opens the roof, leading the moon to reflect off the mirrors and burn Scooby. Fred realizes this is meant for the sun to power a solar furnace, which seems unusual, but Dr. Coffin spooks them away. Meanwhile, Velma and Daphne are woken up from their sapphic propaganda when they hear another patient arrive, and they notice this one doesn't look very alive. The boys run in and both parties catch each other up and despite some rumbling, follow the ambulance, almost right off a collapsed bridge. There is no ambulance, but there is a mad doctor. Everyone tries to sleep again, but the doctor starts his musical instruction for the dogs, who begin to dance along with an entranced Scooby. The gang come to find him, waking him up as he realizes, and the dogs begin a chase. Shaggy is terrified by a monster, but it's just... Wigs. Do you wear wigs? No, I do not. Have you worn wigs? No, I have not. You are a beautiful man. A beautiful man. Will you wear wigs? More of that LGBT propaganda. Won't someone think of the Ron DeSantis's and Matt Your Boy 1653s of the world? Oh, excuse me, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Why, it's Scooby and Shaggy. And the pile of wigs! They wonder what a sanitarium could be doing with all these wigs, but obviously this is just where the new season of Drag Race is being filmed. The boys check out the doctor's lab and fool around until he catches and chases them. Luckily, they're ready to give him their own doctor's visit, but it doesn't help long as he continues to find them everywhere they hide. Meanwhile, the others find what seems to be a morgue full of all the dead patients. It's not what you think, Daphne. Look! With a wig to make us think it was a person. Well, that explains all those wigs we found! Okay, so the solar furnace and cauldron finally makes sense with the gold, but why did Fred make this face? This is concerning, sir. The boys make it to the room and hide as the doctor asks for two of the bodies, unfortunately Shaggy and Scooby's, hauling them into the ambulance as the gang chase after. They finally find the secret passage that leads across the border from Canada to the States, while the boys confirm the mad doctor is front and center. Deep inside, they find a whole setup of all the gold as it's disguised as bread for transport, and the boys are discovered as a chase ensues in the carts. Unfortunately, 
instantly from the good doctor, the boys fall back on the slope and his team has to rush back, flying out into their own trap. Daphne decides the doctor could only be Dr. Tooks very logically, but to their genuine shock, it's the officer. Turns out he's really the ringleader of a gold robbery operation. He used the dogs to keep people away, disguised the gold as people using wigs, melted the gold into bars in the furnace, and disguised it as bread to get it past the border. Dr. Tewksbury turned out to be innocent, sleeping through all this. Scooby at least knows he's an ace at dancing now, though. <laughs> <laughs> and like Scoop the Great Runner, too! <laughs> And that's the tale of the gruesome Dr. Coffin, who seems to remain one of the scariest childhood memories for many fans of Scooby-Doo, even as adults. From the unsettling atmosphere of a sanitarium, to its ghoulish face and terrible laugh, it's no mystery why this is one visit to the doctor most people do not want to make. Something I do want to know is, if Dr. Tewksbury really was the assistant to a real Dr. Coffin, what was he like? And did he really die? How did he die? Were all those things really his experiments, since Tewksbury said they were? He even said the dogs were his. Did the ghoul robbers just happen to find a perfect situation down to the dogs being trained to do what they need already, and if so, how did they discover all that? I have questions, and I need answers. It is urgent. I didn't see this episode young enough to be imprinted with a deep fear of it, but a mad doctor alone is perfect fodder for a chilling tale. The episode itself is also solid in general. Quite funny with a solid mystery and twist, I think. And one of the strongest of its series, it only makes sense that so many people confirm their fear of this one more than most. What about you? Were you scared by this episode like so many others, or is it perfectly tame for you? Let's hear about it in the comments. What about this guy got under your skin, or didn't? Next, we'll take a look at another icon from this series, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Like the video and all that as well. Follow me on social medias if you want to, etc. I'll see you next time in Scooby-Topia. Bye!